Hello everyone. My name is Babarisa Olawala. I'm here to make mathematics understandable as possible. Today's video is on echelon form. Echelon form can be obtained by performing several elementary row operations the echelon or the echelon or the scalar. Now, the modern Latin for scalar and the English version is ladder. Now, the French is the echelon and then the English is the rung of a ladder. So we can say a ladder, the rung. So every matrix can be put in echelon form by applying a sequence of elementary row operations called E row. Elementary matrices. A matrix is called an elementary matrix E if it can be obtained from the identity matrix by performing a single elementary row operation called hero. So we have three types of hero. The first is that we interchange between two rows, Rij, or you multiply a row by a non zero constant K, Rik. And the third one is you had a constant multiple of one row to another row, R, I, J, K. Now let's apply the hero on this three by three identity matrix. So the first rule is that interchange of two rows. So let's say R1 and R3, we are interchanging that, that will be R13. So we have this matrix. Now the next one is that we have uh, multiplication of a row by a non-zero constant. So let's say R2 will multiply by three. That becomes R23, so the row through two only will change. Now let's talk about the third um, row there, which is addition of a constant multiple of a row to another row. Now let's say R1, we're adding it to seven times row three. We have R317, and we're going to have this. But let me explain the R317 properly. Now R3, one, R317 is that we multiply row three by seven, and then you add it to row one. Now, we can see, and then we replace our answer in row one. Now, seven out three, we multiply row three by seven. So we are going to have zero, zero, seven. Then we add it up to row one, and our row one is one, zero, zero. So let's add it up. We are going to have one, zero, seven. You can see how it's being replaced in row one of the matrix. If an E row is applied to an identity matrix high to produce an elementary matrix E, and there is a second arrow which when applied to E produces I back again. Now, let's consider this I as an identity. When we apply arrows on it, we are going to get um, matrix E. Then when we apply another inverse, that is the inverse of the arrows, we are going to get the identity. So by augmenting matrix A with identity I and performing an arrow on it, the matrix A will yield the inverse. So when we have this matrix A, with the inverse slash, then performing a sequence of arrows on it is going to give us the identity and then the inverse of A. Remarks on echelon form. There may be different row echelon form, the RAF, obtained by different sequence of arrows. The same reduced row echelon form, which is RREF, will be obtained even though the arrows are of different sequence. It is possible to combine more than one arrow in the same step. All rev of a matrix A have the same number of zero rows and the leading ones always occur in the same position in rev of A. Contributors to rev and RRF, John Carl Friedrich Gauss, a German mathematician, Posited row reduction, which is Gaussian elimination, for solving systems of linear equations and algorithm to solve least squares problems. This method continues to eliminate non-zero elements below the pivot until it has reached its upper triangular or unreduced row echelon form. Now, the Gaussian elimination algorithm can also be used to compute the rank and nullity of a matrix, the determinant of a square matrix, and the inverse of an invertible matrix. William Jordan in 1888 transformed a matrix by using row operations to convert the matrix into a reduced row echelon form. 
which is now called Gauss-Jordan elimination. Its contribution involves solving linear systems. The Gauss-Jordan algorithm appeared first in the ninth chapter of the mathematical art, which was authored in China around 300 BC. Now let's talk about the row echelon form, REF. Remember, hand matrix A is said to be in row echelon form if it satisfies the following properties. First, the first non-zero entry from the left of a non-zero row is a one. This entry is called the leading one of its row. Second is that for each non-zero row, the leading one appears to the right and below any leading ones in preceding rows. The third is that all zero rows, if there are any, appear in the, at the bottom of the matrix. Let's consider some terminologies in the area. Pivot is the first non-zero element in a row echelon form of a matrix. A pivot is sometimes called a leading variable. The non-leading variables are called free variables. The arbitrary values that are assigned to the free variables are often called parameters. A matrix in REV appears as a staircase pattern of leading ones descending from the upper left corner of the matrix. Therefore, the procedure that produces row echelon form or the RREF is only is called Gaussian elimination. Consider examples for the properties of a row echelon form. Given this matrix, we know that the zeros should be below the leading ones. Also, for the second matrix, the leading one appears to the right and below any leading ones. But for the third matrix, we see that any row with zero entries appear at the bottom. And lastly, is that for this matrix, we know that the first non zero entry of a non zero row is a one. So we can see in row one, row two, row three, all the rows are having one as their first non zero. Now, let's consider the reduced row echelon form, which is RREF. Now, an hand by hand matrix A is said to be in reduced row echelon form if it satisfies the following properties. The first one is that the first non zero entry from the left of a non zero row is one. This entry is called the leading ones of its row. Second is that for each non zero row, the leading ones appear to the right and below any leading ones in preceding rows. The third is that all zero rows, if there are any, appear at the bottom. And the fourth one is that if a column contains a leading ones, then all other entries in that column are zero. Uh, example for the properties of RREF. So, checking this example, the first non zero entry of a non zero row is a one. So, we can see that R1, R2, they all start with one, which has a non zero. Now, let's consider another example. For this, the leading one appears to the right and below any leading ones. The third example is that the zero row appears at the bottom of the matrix. And the fourth example is that all other entries in the column with a leading one are zeros. So we can see C1, C4, C5, C6, and the C9 or 1 with zero below and above it. Let's consider the differences between REF and RREF. So we have it in tabular form. They are in REF, the only elements below the leading ones are zeros. In RREF, the elements above and below the leading ones are zeros. In REF, it is deployed as Gaussian elimination method. RREF is deployed as Gauss Jordan elimination method. It deals with forward face only for the ref and for the RREF it deals with forward face and backward face. Solution of a linear system via RREF. Now, if we are given this linear system, our x1 is 3, the x2 is minus 1, the x3 is 0, and the x4 is 5. In this case, there is a unique solution. For a second linear system, our x1 will be 0, 
the x2 will be 0 and then 0x3 equals 1 this is not possible so in this case it means there is no solution now the last linear system for our x1 will be minus 1 the x2 will be 2 then 0 for x3 0 x3 equals 0 something is fishy here so it means that my x3 can be any number for example if it is 2 0 multiply by 2 equals 0 if my x3 is 5 0 multiply by 5 equals 0 so in this case we have infinitely many solutions ref or ref the row echelon form of a matrix is not unique but the reduced row echelon form of a matrix is unique therefore a matrix is reduced row echelon form is of necessity in row echelon form a system of linear equation is said to be in row echelon form if its augmented matrix is in row echelon form similarly a system of linear equation is said to be in reduced row echelon form or in canonical form if its augmented matrix is a reduced row echelon form compute the row echelon form of the given matrix so we are given a three by four matrix the first step we have to do is that we have to consider the leading variable to be one but we have minus one here so what are we going to do we have to eliminate that minus one make choices one. so we multiply row one by minus one that is minus one r one so we multiply the entire element of row one now when we do that we are able to get our pivot one However, we want to reduce R2 and R3 to 0 below the pivot 1. Now, we multiply row 1 by minus 2 and add it to row 2. So here we have R1 for 1 and R2 to 2. So we have minus 2 R1 plus R2 in order to turn the first element of R2 to 0. Let's now move to the row 3. So with the leading one of row one against row three, we we'll multiply row one by minus one and add it to row three. So in this case, we have minus one r one plus r three. Now the next thing now we have is that below our leading one, everything has turned to zero. So we have to move to the next row, which is the leading variable of the row two minus um, four. However, we don't want four; we want one there. So what we do is that we we'll multiply row two by one fourth so that is one uh, r2 multiplied by one over four okay now we have if we do that we're going to get our one as our leading one the leading one in row two so the next is that we want to eliminate be, uh, the one below the leading one which is in row three which is one now what are we going to do we're going to multiply row two by minus one and add it to row three in this case we have our row two multiply by minus one plus r3 so in this case it will turn the element below the pivot to zero now this is what we have here but what we notice is that at the bottom the last entry there is zero of the row three so this has already formed the ref example two compute the reduced row echelon form of the given augmented matrix now what we are going to do is that we begin with a forward face and for this forward face we locate the first column that does not consist entirely of zero rows and then we interchange rows that is row one and row two to bring a non-zero entry to the top of the column that is r12 after interchanging the row we can see that our row one has a pivot two but we need to introduce the leading one in the row one by multiplying the first row by half. So after this, we are going to have our one in the row one. And then we introduce zero below the leading one. But two, zero is in row two, so we're not going to consider, we consider row one and row three. So in doing so, we are going to have this matrix in which uh, we consider the submatrix that remain because after the elimination, we see the submatrix that is minus 2 and 5 there. So then we locate the column that does not consist entirely of 0. Now we have our pivot in row 2, but it's not 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce leading 1 in row 2. 
And we do that by multiplying it with minus 1 over 2 out 2. With that, we are going to have our matrix where our pivot 1 is now in row 2. Then we introduce zeros below the leading ones in row 2. By doing so, we are going to have our row 2 against row 3, which is that 1 and 5. And we are going to compute it as minus 5 R2 plus R3. After that, we are going to have our matrix where we have our pivot 1 in row 2. Then we go to row 3 to have our pivot 1. However, it is not 1, it is half. So we are going to introduce the leading 1 in row 3 by multiplying it with 2. Now we have completed our matrix. That means that it has formed REF. Since the staircase is formed from the REF, we proceed with the backward phase. In backward phase, begin elimination with last non-zero roll and working upward. In this case now, we have our pivot as one in both row two, two and three. Now we work with the backward phase by introducing zero above the leading ones. Now we have our pivot 1 in row 3 and we want to eliminate the row 2 which is minus 7 over 2. So we're going to have 7 over 2 times R3 plus R2. Now after that we, we're going to get the matrix whereby our pivot is still 1 but our R2 has gone. Now we are moving to R1 so it's going to be minus 6 times R3 plus R1. After that, that, we have done our elimination, then we can then move to second row, which has our pivot 1. By doing this, 5 times R2 plus R1. When we do this one properly, we are going to have our matrix. In this case now, our pivot position is in row 1, row 2, and row 3. These are the pivot 1s that we have. And definitely, this form the RRTF matrix. Rank of a matrix. The rank of a matrix is the maximum number of linearly independent row vectors of the matrix. In other words, the rank of a matrix is the number of columns with pivot elements. Also, the rank of a matrix is the number of non-zero rows with pivot elements. Now, let's consider this example. We have the, now the first column has a pivot one. The third column has a pivot 1 and the fifth column has a pivot 1. So we count all these pivots, the numbers of the pivots we have, and that is 3. So the rank is 3. Let's consider another example. Now, based on the row, so row 1 has a pivot 1, row 2 has a pivot 1. However, row 3 does not have any pivots. So we count the numbers of these pivots and we have 2. So the rank of this matrix is 2. Now, consider the following exercises. I'm going to pause the video and you try it before I show you the solution to each of them. Now we can see the solution to it. I hope you got it right. If you like this video, please click on the like and subscribe button for more videos and don't forget to drop your comment below.